In this demo, I'm using a program where you, instead of setting xd and xw, you set the operating conditions. So we have how many ideal stages we have above the feed and below the feed, and then it calculates xd and xw for us. So this is simulating a real um, column or using the same kind of simplifications we've done before. So we have three ideal stages above the feed. So one, two, three, and then we shift to lower. So this is a suboptimal feed location, right? We can change that to optimal feed location. And then we see that XD actually increased a bit and XW decreased a bit. Okay, what happens if we change feed condition? Well, we can change Q, for example, to zero. That means that this line will instead go horizontal. And if we keep the lines in the positions we have uh, with the same slopes, well, then we're going to go out there and we need to do a smaller triangle. And then we need to move things around a bit. So what happened now? XD decreased. And XW also decreased. And you can play around this uh, in your mind. Uh, if you if you set the reflux ratio and you set the boil up ratio, then you actually set the slopes of the operating lines, and they must still intersect each other at uh, a point on the Q line. And the Q line is fixed, and you just have to move around these ones until they fit. And the problem is that you still have to draw exactly seven triangles. So that's a real hassle to do by hand. Uh, how low reflex ratio can we have? Well, uh, if we set to zero now, uh, that doesn't work, right? No, but if we set Q to one and reflex ratio to zero, it actually worked. Why is that? Well, this is a setup where you actually have the feed coming in as a liquid at the top. Now you don't need a condenser. Okay, let's play around with some other things. Let's increase the reflex ratio. You see now that the XD here, that's 0 0.56. Let's increase the reflex ratio. Now XD moved away from the feed uh, composition and it moves even further away. And the more we increase the reflux ratio, the further away XD is from XW. And the same thing with the boiler pressure. If we change that, let's lower that to two. Then XW comes closer to the feed. Let's increase it. Then it comes further away. So total reflux, then, uh, you, I mean, we, we can increase this a bit. Let's see how much the program copes with. Yeah, what, what happens now is that you get a XD that's really, really close to 100% uh, in this case, since we now uh, have these other things set. Uh, and that might not be that interesting, but so the higher reflux ratio you have, the higher XD you will have uh, in a running setup. So far in this demo, we have looked at what happens if you have a distillation column up and running with a certain number of equilibrium stages. Well, actually, uh, in a real case, you know how many physical uh, trays you have, but we have assumed now that you can have 100% efficiency so we can calculate how many equilibrium stages we have and that doesn't change uh, we have assumed and then we have played around with changing operating conditions so what happens in the reboiler what happens in the in the condenser and see how that changes the separation the distance between the composition in the feed the composition in the bottom and the composition in the distillate but let's go back now and look at the way we looked at things before in the course. Uh, so using my Cape Tealers graphical method for calculating how many physical stages and ideal uh, trays we need for a certain uh, 
separation. So we, we know the composition of the feed, we know what bottoms product we want to have and what distillate we need to have. To be able to look at that, we have to change program in MATLAB. So this is another demo program in MATLAB. And here I can choose between a few different systems I put in. So let's start with benzene toline. And if I click update here, I now get the system curve for this system. And the uh, McCabe Taylor graphical method solution uh, using these numbers here. So these three here are the compositions of the bottoms, the feed, and the distillate. And down here we have the reflux ratio. And here is the conditions of the feed. So one means that we have a liquid at its boiling point. Let's change that to a zero and click update to see what happens. Then it changed to a horizontal line. So everything's fine here. And note that uh, while we before had a program where we set how many triangles we had in the diagram, uh, we now use the same kind of thing with, which we usually do in the course, uh, namely that we have the distance here. So we know what the distillate is, uh, we know what the bottoms is and we know what the feed is and then we calculate uh, how many triangles we need, how many ideal stages, equilibrium stages. And then to calculate how many physical trays you need, you need to convert that using an overall tray efficiency. In the uh, program we used before, we couldn't actually get a minimum reflux ratio. And why is that? Well, that's because if you have a real system and you change the reflux ratio, the difference between the distillate and the bottoms will change. So it makes sense. And the minimum reflux ratio uh, is when you instead go it from this perspective, you want to calculate how many physical stages you will actually need uh, by first calculating how many equilibrium stages you need, then you hit a point where uh, you have to have a certain reflex to make things happen. So let's put R as 1 here instead and see what happens. Oh, that was too low. Uh, increase it a bit. 1.2 was slightly too high, 1.21 perhaps. Somewhere here we have the minimum reflex ratio. And there we have it. We get now it's not infinite, but it's 20.78. And if I change this a little bit, decrease it a little bit, then we get uh, the minimum reflux ratio. So it's approximately 1.22 there. And we can compare that uh, with the maximum reflux ratio. If you just reflux everything, just put in a large number here. I don't know how large number it will cope with, but that seems to work fine. Now you get instead the operating line going along the diagonal. So here we had 4.72 ideal stages, whereas we before had 20 something. And let's put in 1.22 again and see. Oops, 1.22. And yeah, there is a limit to how much, how carefully we, we can draw this. But you see, there is a point where you get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller triangles. And you could fill around with this for ages if you would, if you'd like to. Le let's choose another system, ethanol water, which has a bump in the system curve. And let's change things a bit. Let's decrease the, the F. And let's change the Q to 1. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, also, let's increase uh, XD a bit. Okay, there I got something interesting. Uh, you see here that the operating line now is on the wrong side of the system curve. So th that's uh, clearly a way too small reflux ratio. So we need to increase that. Let's try it as uh, 1.5, still uh, too low, 
two still too low but we're coming close perhaps 2.5 there we uh, that's good actually uh, we have 156 ideal stages and note here that I mean normally or rather I should say often when uh, we ask for the minimum reflux ratio is just to get uh, the Q line and then draw it to the system curve and then you draw an operating line that goes through that point but that doesn't work here does it because even for a much higher uh, reflux ratio we get an infinite number of of ideal stages so if i put back here 1.1 or something we're still not in this point here so i need to decrease it even further Yeah, so somewhere around there we get the intersection between the Q line and uh, and the system curve. And clearly this this is bad. I mean, yeah, uh, the number of ideal stages is infinite, which it actually says here as well. But this isn't the minimum reflex ratio. Uh, the minimum reflex ratio is higher than this. So when calculating minimum reflux ratio, look for the reflux ratio, the highest reflux ratio that gives you an infinite number of ideal uh, stages. And as before, if we put in a very high reflux ratio, then we get the operating line along the diagonal. So at the design stage, when you play around with uh, things here, uh, you can play around with the reflux ratio and the feed condition. You get different number of ideal stages. In the real case, where you actually have built a distillation column and then you change operating conditions while running it, then the number of physical traces can't change, right? So what will change instead is the uh, composition of the distillate and the composition of the bottoms.